This is National 9 News with Brett McLeod. A Melbourne prisoner arrives in Bali to help save Chappelle Corby. Family pride overflows as Melbourne does it for Troy. And Shane Warne at the centre of another text message scandal. Good evening. Also tonight, a time to celebrate for Melbourne's Christians and young sweet tooths. Accused drug smuggler Chappelle Corby has been given fresh hope with the arrival in Bali of a Melbourne prisoner her lawyers believe can help her avoid the firing squad. Police in Australia are already believed to be acting on his information. Mark Burrows is in Denpasar. An unlikely lifeline, John Patrick Ford, arrives at Bali Police Headquarters under heavy police guard. It's here in Bali it's expected he will repeat explosive claims of a drug ring running between Brisbane and Sydney. A racket that could have snared Chappelle Corby. An explanation to be offered by Corby's legal team for the 4.1 kilos of marijuana found in her boogie board bag. In the wake of those allegations, action. Federal police began questioning Qantas baggage handlers at Sydney and Brisbane airports who were working the day Corby flew out. Union officials conceding a domestic drug organisation could exist. Uh, it is possible, but uh, we certainly haven't heard of anything of that magnitude at this stage anyhow. Australia Meanwhile, Attorney General evidence, Philip Ruddick uh, has defended the government's the... handling of the case, blaming delays in the investigation on Corby's defence team. Uh, one of our concerns was that they left it very late in the day and then offered criticism of the Australian government. So now it seems John Ford is set to give his evidence this Tuesday, but already there are signs his evidence may not have the impact his lawyers are hoping for. The chief judge says the prisoner's unsupported statement without a witness may not help Corby's case. In Bali, Mark Burroughs, National 9 News. A pilot has been killed and another injured in a collision between two gliders near Benalla this afternoon. The aircraft hit over Dookie. One of the pilots parachuted to safety but suffered a broken arm. The other died when his aircraft crashed into a paddock. The family of tsunami victim Troy Broadbridge has expressed its gratitude for last night's moving AFL tribute. Almost 50,000 fans were at the MCG to bid farewell to Broadbridge and see his former teammates defeat Essendon. Clint Stanaway was there. For the Broadbridge family, last night's MCG tribute meant the world. The crowd uh, that was there and the support that they gave us uh, was pretty special. Terrific night and uh, a way to pay tribute to uh, my brother and a good man. I'm so proud of the Melbourne Football Club and everyone for the support they've given us and the way they played last night was fantastic. Melbourne and Essendon players entered the MCG as one. 2005 Red Balloons were launched as both teams ran through their respective banners. Troy's three siblings also played a part in the tribute, releasing 20 white balloons. Demon players were close to tears as they observed a minute silence. Troy's wife Trisha was then invited to toss the coin. The tribute complete with the Demons coasting to victory. He runs to 30 and Travis Johnston finishes it off in style for the Demons. Emotions spilling over after the game. Another show of comradeship. Players gathered for their usual recovery session this morning, buoyed by their spirited performance last night and touching tribute to their mate. The way we went about our footy last night, we were going to beat just about any side in the competition. The club and indeed Troy's family now looking to the future. It all feels unreal for us, but slowly but surely we'll build. We're going through it on a personal basis, which is, I think we're, we're pretty lucky. Clint Stanaway, National 9 News. St Kilda captain Nick Revolt emerged from hospital late this afternoon following surgery on his broken collarbone. His operation was a success and he hopes to be back in four to six weeks. Revolt holds no grudges against Lions Mal Michael and Chris Scott who targeted the injured star. Look, I've got uh, absolutely no problem with that incident whatsoever. Um, you know, I myself didn't know that I had a broken collarbone so um, <laughs> there are, there's certainly not to, uh, not to know that, you know, uh, what, what the extent of my injury was. Cricket Australia says it won't be taking action against Shane Warne after claims the champion bowler was involved in another text messaging scandal. A New Zealand newspaper says it was approached by a person wanting to sell the story for $30,000.
Nick Johnson with the latest. As Shane Warne took to the field for the third test in Auckland, the champion leg spinner found himself embroiled in yet another controversy. The latest story printed in New Zealand's Sunday News centres around allegations Warne sent personal text messages during a match in Wellington. The paper claims an unknown source had offered to sell the story for $30,000, but a lawyer acting for the bowler warned it against publishing details of the messages. As Warne helped bowl the Kiwis all out today, his wife Simone was nowhere to be seen at their Melbourne home. But late today, his brother and manager Jason issued this statement. Shane will not be making any comment. It's a nothing story and doesn't warrant any comment. A spokesman for Cricket Australia confirmed today that team management had spoken to Warren about the latest allegations but said it was a private issue between Warren and his family and it would not be pursuing the matter any further. It's not the first time the Victorian has been the centre of claims about improper conduct. In June 2000 he admitted to making lewd phone calls to an English nurse while three years later a South African mother of three claimed Warren had harassed her with raunchy phone messages. Since returning to the game after his suspension for taking a banned diuretic, Warren has become the world's highest wicket taker, but recently announced he was moving to England to pursue his career with county side Hampshire. Nick Johnston, National 9 News. The protest at South Australia's Baxter Detention Centre has turned violent after police charged into the crowd of demonstrators. Punches were thrown and nine people were arrested when they tried to seize a protester's kite. James Talia with more. On the detention centre's perimeter, the weekend standoff suddenly turned ugly. A protester with a kite became the focus of police attention. When officers brought him down, it sparked an all-in brawl as other protesters came to assist and police tried to protect each other. Moments later, with the situation seemingly back under control, the police realised one of their own had been left alone, surrounded by protesters, and the brawl began again as they went back to get him. When they rush in and start punching people willy-nilly, the people have been injured because of what the police had to do, all over a kite. But the police say it's not that simple. Flying a kite is apparently a breach of restricted airspace. We've made it clear to the protesters all along that it wouldn't be tolerated due to the safety conditions with the helicopter flying in close proximity. But more than that, police believe the kite brawl was a diversion. At the same time, they claim four protesters were using a grappling hook and wire cutters to try to breach the detention centre's main fence. In all, nine were arrested. James Talia, National 9 News. Melbourne has marked Easter Sunday with traditional church services and a march through the city. Mayor Greaves says world events featured strongly as Christians came together to celebrate the resurrection of Christ. As they came together to celebrate new life, worshippers at St Patrick's were asked not to forget the frail and ill. The Catholic Archbishop of Melbourne took the opportunity to weigh into the debate surrounding Terry Schiavo, the American woman at the centre of a right to die case. What happens if these important, fundamental, God-given principles of a person's right to nutrition and hydration are set aside? At St Paul's Anglican Cathedral, the chance for a fresh start played a part in the Easter message. It demonstrates God's power to create and recreate, to make all things new, even me, even now. Easter Sunday is one of the most significant events in the Christian calendar, with hundreds taking to the streets in a march of celebration. The 15th ecumenical walk continued on to Federation Square, while at the Royal Women's Hospital, the Kays celebrated new life with the birth of their first child, Ellie Louise. Michael was on his way to the football when Michelle's waters broke, and he still hasn't been home to change. Still got to watch a footy on the TV, so it was all right. <laughs> And it seems the Easter Bunny was spreading cheer and chocolate to Melbourne's children. You go, Ruby, you go, Ruby, you go, eat it. No. Mia Greaves, National 9 News. When we return, Indonesia's plan to rebuild Aceh and another deadly car bomb rocks Beirut.